Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I got the G35 coupe in the garage. We've got a check engine light and it's got a hard start problem. So we're gonna dive in and see if we can get this problem solved. Today I'll be using the Blue Driver uh, wireless uh, scan tool. I've already got it plugged in here. Basically all we need to do is just cycle on the car uh, and then there's an app right on the phone that allows you to um, scan any codes or uh, service engine lights, anything like that. So I'll show you a screenshot of what that and the problem that we're having. Here's the home screen of the Blue Driver app on my iPhone. As you can see, the scan tool is pairing with um, my iPhone. And what you're going to want to do is go ahead and once it's connected, you'll just tap the read codes icon in the top left. Next, it's going to take you to the scan results page and it'll ask uh, what codes you want to read. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and run all system modules. So if you just click that, it'll begin scanning the car. Once it's completed scanning, the Blue Driver will give you a list of the trouble codes that are showing up in your vehicle. Um, and if you see there's the arrow to the right hand side of each of those codes, you can click on those for a little bit further detail on those trouble codes. Here we can see we've got a code P0345, which is a camshaft position circuit malfunction on bank two. And uh, the most common fix for this is replacing the camshaft position sensor. We also find that we're getting a code C1130, which is an engine signal. Um, and as you can see, uh, one of the top reported fixes is replacing the camshaft position sensor. One other neat feature with the Blue Driver app is uh, if you click the send button up in the top right corner, you can uh, send the results of your scan by text or email or even save it to your device for a future reference. And as you'll see, the scan report is uh, very detailed. It's got great information on there, something you can print off, take to the parts store with you. Very helpful. So now that we've got the code pulled, um, it's going to be time to go ahead and open up the hood and get to work. Uh, we did confirm that that code is related to the camshaft position sensor on bank two. And uh, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and get that replaced. And I'm going to walk you guys through the process of just exactly what's involved. All right, so before we get started, here are all the parts and tools that you're going to need to complete this job. Um, obviously, you're going to need uh, ratchets. Uh, I've got both a flexible head extended length uh, ratchet and then just a standard size ratchet. Um, these are 3 8 inch drive. And then also I've got access to air tools, so I've got my, uh, my air ratchet available. Um, having a work light is uh, very, very handy. Um, some moisture displacing penetrating oil, WD-40, something like that. Carb throttle body cleaner will be uh, very useful. Um, I like to use this uh, magnet tray just to hold bolts as I you know, take them off, make sure that I don't drop them and they don't fall. Um, needle nose pliers to move a couple hose clamps. You're going to need a 5 uh, mil hex uh, socket. You'll need a 10 mil. Uh, I use the deep well, a couple situations where that is handy or you know it makes it so I don't have to use the extension on it. Uh, 10 mil socket. Uh, on my, uh, one of my uh, air intake duct um, clamps I needed an 8 mil. Yours might be a little bit different. Uh, and then obviously a uh, 3 8 inch uh, extension. Um, and then obviously we'll need uh, the new part. So I went with the OEM part on this uh, job. Here's the uh, old part that we're replacing. Uh, you can see what that looks like. Go, it's kind of got this angle to it. One side's smooth and the other side's got this uh, shape with design on it. And then there's a rubber o-ring and that's where the electrical uh, 
looks up right there. Um, so here's the uh, part number if you're interested. Okay, the first step is gonna be to take this plastic engine cover off. Um, and for, for that, all we're gonna need is a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And if you've got it available, air tools are great. So uh, like I said, if you've got it available, why not use it? I have this available, so that'll make this a lot quicker. Away we go. Okay, so we got the plastic engine cover off. Now we're gonna be able to access the throttle body and the intake tube, which those have to come out in order for us to get down to the um, camshaft position sensor. In this situation, it was calling for bank two. Bank two is on the driver's side. Um, so I'll show you once we get in there exactly where that camshaft position sensor is located. Next, we're gonna be removing this air intake tube. Uh, in order to do that, there is one uh, bracket bo uh, bolt right here, which is, uses a number 10, and then there's a clamp bolt right here and a clamp bolt right here. Uh, this is the uh, rev up uh, air intake. Uh, so I think it's from like the 2006 uh, 350Z and G35. Um, so this is slightly different than the 2004 stock setup but the clamps are the same if I remember correctly. Uh, this is number 10 and then this is a, or I'm sorry, 10 millimeter and eight millimeter and 10 millimeter on that bolt. So first I'm just gonna start by putting a little penetrating lubricant on each of these uh, just to make the process a little bit easier. WD-40, anything like that is fine. Once again, in this situation, because these are just clamp bolts, I'm going to go easy on these. I'm not going to use the, the air tool on that. So we'll just get the process started. Okay, so now that we've got those all loosened, we're just going to pull this tube off from the uh, throttle body and then also remove it from the air box. Um, and then underneath you're going to find that there is a uh, uh, nose. Just pinch that clamp. If you got some needle nose pliers that'll be helpful. There we go. That'll make it use very easy. And now this hose will just pop right off. There we go. So now we can set that to the side. Next, we got to take off the uh, the throttle body so that we can get down to the uh, camshaft position sensor. So for the bolts on the uh, throttle body, we're using a number five uh, hex head. And I've put a, an extension on here and then also something you might like is if you've got a little bit larger ratchet with, so you get some extra leverage on it. These are torqued down rather tight. So give that a pull, loosen one move over to the next one. Something that'll help out too is if you've got uh, hex head uh, bits that are a little bit longer, these bolts are back behind the throat of the throttle body and it can be tricky getting this on here. So, something I did off camera, I shot a little bit of penetrating oil on each of these uh, bolts you can access the, uh, the end of the boat where, where the threading is right there. Um, that always helps. So right now I'm just going to go through and break each of these loose. And this is the tricky one. Getting down to So 
now that I've got each of those broken loose, I'm going to switch over to my air, make this go a lot quicker. And before we pull this off, there is one plug that goes into the uh, throttle body here. You just pinch the clip on it and pull it straight off. It might be a little bit easier to do that while the, uh, it's still attached to the intake. And be careful not to lose or damage the uh, gasket there because you're going to need to reuse that. But there we go. So throttle body is off. We're going to set that to the side. So where the bank two camshaft position sensor is located, right down here, back behind, there is a sensor right underneath this hose. So we're going to take this clamp off, remove this hose, get that out of there, and then we'll be able to get into that sensor nice and easy. off we'll just set it to the side and now you should be able to see that sensor pretty easily and it is this part right here and you can see the wiring for that comes right off of this loom uh, that hooks up to the spark plug wires so we're just gonna have to move that out of the way a little bit but there is one bolt down here hard to see but it's down there one bolt holding that sensor on and that's what we got to get off and then you pull it straight So once again, this is a 10 millimeter bolt and we're just going to go ahead and loosen that. Once we've got that loosened and removed, we'll just pull that sensor straight out. There's an O-ring on it, so it might be a little challenging to pull it out, but once you get that through, it comes right out. We just got to unplug. So here we go. Here comes that 10 millimeter bolt. Get that off and put that in the tray and then again we're just going to pull the sensor straight out. There we go. Just as easy as that. Comes straight out. And now if I remember correctly there's a little trick to this, how this unplugs. What you have to do on this is that, that uh, green tab right there, you actually have to pinch it in. And you can see it's pinched in now. Um, but when you pinch it in, then you pull out on the sensor. I'm, not, I'm gonna have a hard time showing you what I mean with, by pinching it in. But you can see right there that it's actually pinched in. So the, the green piece is pushed in this way and then that'll allow you to pull the sensor right out. And here we go, that's what it looks like right there. And on bank two, it's got this, the, the plug uh, is bent a little bit to fit around the wiring and the uh, vacuum hose line um, down behind the engine. So let's get out the new one, I'll swap it out. So here's the replacement part that I'm using. I'm using a OEM part, Hitachi brand. Um, let's see, here's the, the actual part number. I did this job once before and replaced it with a, a cheaper, you know, aftermarket brand and uh, it only lasted about, I don't know, 10 months or so. So I'm going to see if I can get the manufacturer warranty on this, but uh, the next time around I'm putting the OEM uh, part in there and hopefully I won't have to do it again for a long time. So out of the box, we've got a good amount of uh, bubble, bubble wrap to uh, protect the part during shipping. Just pop it open and see what we've got here. And then they've also got it in a plastic bag inside, but you can see that that is, in fact, the same part. So here's the new part, and I'm going to do my best not to get it dirty. So 
there we are. Nice new uh, clean camshaft position sensor. And that's gonna insert on the back of the um, heads, cylinder heads, just under the camshaft, or actually I think it might be right over top of the camshaft, and then that just senses what position it's in, helps with the ignition process. Right, so in with the new part. Just gonna carefully slide this in. Again, I'm gonna do my best not to get it dirty. And then you just snap it. You heard that snap there, that's the O-ring. Get in there just right. We'll come back in with our 10 mil bolt. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and get the plug back on and pushed on and it's clicked and that green part has slid out so now it won't come unplugged. There we go. And now we'll just continue this process in reverse. Slide that into place. Scoot it all the way up. And there we go. Good. Good deal. Right in place. And now we'll get those needle nose on there. back exactly where it was. Nothing better. Throttle body with gasket. Let's get it started. I'm just going to go ahead and take the hex head with the uh, extension on there and I'm going to use that to help me get these finger tight. I'm not going to use the air going back in on this, especially not as I start to thread it, but even once I get into snugging it down, I'm not going to use the air on it because I don't want to over tighten it, damage anything like that. Right, that's that. So, something to mention, if your throttle body is super, super dirty, good time to clean it out. Make sure there's no debris or anything in there. Um, next, we're going to reconnect the electrical connection to the throttle body. Push that on until it clicks. There we go. Nice and secure there. Let's start by reconnecting this hose. Pop that into place. There we go. And then we'll move the clamp into place. Get the needle nose on that. Just 
slide this on here. Same up here. Good. All right, let's go clear the codes. See if that helps out with our starts. From the home screen on the Blue Driver app, you're gonna tap the clear codes icon, and then that's gonna take you over to the scan result page again, where it'll ask you uh, which codes you'd like to clear. Again, I'm just gonna clear all the codes. Okay, so there we have it. I uh, cleared the codes and we've got no more uh, service engine lights showing up on the dashboard. Uh, it starts right up super easy. You can tell the difference between uh, when that part goes bad and then once you replace it, you know, the, just when you turn the key, it just starts right up. So hopefully that helps. Uh, pretty easy fix. Uh, you know, if, if you got all the tools right there at hand, uh, this job probably shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes. All right, thanks for everything. As usual, I'll put the tools and parts, everything I used uh, to get this job done, I'll put it right down in the description. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.